Welcome back to the channel. Since there's been several requests for revisiting black powder revolvers, that's what we'll be looking at today. For those of you not all that familiar with cap and ball revolvers, let's take a look at how they work. Prior to the advent of modern revolvers that use self-contained metallic cartridges, this type of firearm reigned supreme. Revolvers like these offered multiple shot capability in an era when rifles were still single shot muzzle loaders. When it came down to firepower, this would definitely give the advantage to anyone who was able to afford one. To load one of these black powder revolvers, the appropriate powder charge is placed into each chamber. Most powder flasks have a nipple on it that'll hold the correct amount of powder for a particular caliber. Or you can always use one of these adjustable powder measures. To dispense the correct amount of powder into the nipple, you simply hold the powder measure upside down, depress the plunger on the side, give it a few shakes to make sure you completely fill the nipple, stand her upright, and you'll have a measured powder charge inside the nipple. The next step is to pour your measured powder charge into the cylinder's chamber. I like placing a small lubricated wad on top of the powder charge before seating the projectile. These seem to help reduce powder fouling a little, and you can buy them by the bag for any place that sells black powder supplies. Once you've installed the water with the powder charge, place a projectile or ball at the mouth of the cylinder. Rotate the cylinder directly under the loading lever, and use it to depress the ball into the chamber. Once you have the ball seated firmly into the chamber, it's ready for a percussion cap. The next step is to install a percussion cap on the cylinder's nipple. Once you have that accomplished, the revolver is ready to fire. I don't know how it came about, but there seems to be a general misconception that black powder revolvers aren't as accurate as their modern smokeless powder counterparts. Having owned and fired black powder firearms for many years, I found that statement to be a bit untrue. Properly loaded, a black powder revolver can be surprisingly accurate. My buddy Backjack and I decided to take this 1851 Colt Navy, set up a target in an attempt to replicate the Hickok vs. Tut gunfight. This 1851 Navy is an exact replica of the one that Wild Bill Hickok used in that gunfight. Hickok's revolver now resides in the Autry Museum in Los Angeles, California. History has it that Wild Bill's luck didn't go so well in a poker game. Not having ready cash to cover his bet resulted in Hickok owing a sum of money to a fellow by the name of Davis Tutt. Well, Bill, of course, promised to pay Tutt as soon as possible. Unimpressed, Tutt reaches across the table grabs Bill's watch and states, well, it looks like I'd be holding on to this until you do. Although this angered Hickok, he reportedly told Tut, very well, but I better not see you wearing it. The very next day, Hickok was informed that Tut was not only wearing the watch, he was also telling people that he wasn't afraid to do so. Bill left the saloon and spotted Tut some distance down the street. Witnesses say that Hickok hollered down the street at Tut to put the watch away. Instead of complying, Tut pulled out his revolver and fired at Wild Bill, missing him. Hickok returned fire, striking Tut in the chest, killing him. The distance between them was reported to have been approximately 75 to 80 yards. To satisfy myself that this was a feasible shot using a 36 caliber Navy revolver, we set up a target at 80 yards. Unlike Hickok, I took my time to aim. The minute I squeezed the trigger, a plume of smoke partially obscured my view, but I distinctly heard the bullet ring the steel target. Yeah, buddy. To me, this not only verified witness testimony, it also verified that a 36 caliber Navy revolver is accurate enough to make that shot. Historical references aside, black powder revolvers are always a hoot to shoot. Try leaving your modern revolver or semi-auto at home and take one of these to the range. Since Backjack had never fired a black powder firearm, 
I walked him through the loading process for both muzzle loaders and percussion revolvers. Here's a clip of him shooting his first rounds from a couple of black powder firearms. That check JW. That's, uh, that's got some punch to it right there. Traditions, trapper, <laughs> 50 caliber, 1861 Army, 44 caliber. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> That's the first time I shot a cap and ball right there. Afterward, he was definitely showing symptoms of officially catching the black powder bug. By the way, if you're not already subscribed to his channel, I'll leave a link for you down below. So be sure to head over and hit that subscribe button. At the end of the day, there's no empty cases to pick up and no need to spend time at the reloading bench. After a proper cleaning, a black powder revolver is ready to go again. If you like historical firearms, particularly the revolvers, adding one if not several to your collection will seem like the thing to do. At least in my case it did. Until next time, practice often, shoot straight, and thanks for stopping by.